So I recently posted a short here on the channel and since then it's become one of my most viewed videos on the channel and here it is for those that haven't seen it. This is how I melt snow off my Model 3 with the Tesla app. So I'll just go into my Tesla app here, click on climate, and then hit this button in the bottom right to turn on maximum heat. Not only does this heat the cabin, but it also defrosts the front and rear windshields. So I'll turn this on when I get up in the morning and by the time I get out to my car, most of the snow has melted off and I won't have to scrape anything. And now it is basically cleared off. Only problem is there is no engine. So my entire front area is still covered in snow. So this was just a simple video showing me preheating my car and how it can melt snow off the car if it is incredibly cold out and you've received some snow. And since this video has gotten so popular, obviously it's come with a lot of hate comments, many saying things like, and after this battery 20% from 100%, most of the snow is melted off along with half the battery, battery is dead after snow melt mode, and by the time most of the snow is melted, your battery is dead if it wasn't charging, and by the end of the heating process, you lost half your battery of your car battery. A little redundant there, but all right. So basically I wanted to put this to the test and see how much battery I actually lost by preheating my car. So I'm breaking this test into a few different categories. Test one is gonna be with the battery warm, a higher state of charge and warming the cabin up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So with this test, I just try to simulate maybe heating up your car before you head home for the day. It's probably got a higher state of charge because you've charged overnight before driving to work and are just about to head home but I wanted this test to be with the battery warm. So it's got a higher state of charge, but that snowflake hasn't showed up in the app showing that the battery needs preheated. Test two is with the battery cold, a medium state of charge and warming the cabin to 70 degrees. This I try to simulate a really cold day, maybe where you're running some errands, your car has lost a little bit of battery and you've maybe stopped to get a bite to eat and are warming it up before you head home. But since it's been sitting there, while you've been eating in the cold, the battery's gotten cold, so you'll need to preheat it before you head home. Test three is with the battery cold, a low state of charge, and using max heat to warm up the car. This is basically a stress test of the battery to see how much it can handle and how much battery you're gonna lose. If you do have a lower state of charge, your battery's really cold, it's cold out, and you've really gotta warm the car up quickly. Test four is the hardest and what I think will be the most energy intensive test. In this case, the battery is cold. It's extremely low on state of charge, like sub 30% and you've got to warm up the battery on max heat as well as the cabin. And to make things fun, we're gonna throw on all of the heated seats as well. This is something I really don't suggest because if your battery is this low, it's probably better to find a plug than worrying about preheating your car just so it doesn't get down to zero and damage the battery in any way. But I thought this would just be an interesting test to check out what happens. So what I'll do for each test is take a screenshot of the app with all of the car details before I start the test. I will then start the climate to whatever temperature I want to depending on the test and then let it run for 15 minutes. I am gonna leave sentry mode on for all these tests because I'm assuming if you are plugged in charging, you're probably not gonna have sentry mode on and you're not gonna be worrying about how much battery you're gonna lose by preheating the car. So I'm really trying to simulate what it would be like if you're preheating your car just away from a charger, you've got a cold battery, What, how much energy is that gonna take? Another thing to note here is I do have the 2020 Model 3. I don't have the updated 2021 model with the heat pump, so my preconditioning is gonna be a little less efficient than what is gonna be in the new Model 3s. This might sound like a very scientific test, but let me reassure you, this is not scientific at all, and that is not the intention here. This is to simulate what might happen in the real world and share my experience preheating my car. A lot of different factors are going to be at play here, so I don't really have a controlled environment to compare it to, and in reality, the world is not a controlled environment. So this is really just to share my experience. You know, in an ideal world, I would do all of this in maybe like a climate-controlled warehouse and do multiple trials and do this multiple times and get an average result, but I've only got a week to do this, and I've got a full-time job to worry about as well. So this is just sharing my experience preheating my car. With that being said, like I mentioned earlier, I try to choose some scenarios that are similar to real world experiences for me and just give you an idea of what to expect when you are preheating your car. So let's get into the results. So for test one, a reminder, this is the leaving work test. So we've got a higher state of charge at 263 miles. We've got an interior cabin temperature of 50 degrees and we've got no snowflake on the battery, meaning it is warm and doesn't need warmed up. 
So I let this test run for 15 minutes and at the end the cabin was all warmed up to 70 degrees and we had a ending range of 259 miles, meaning we lost 4 miles of range. For test 2 we have a starting range of 170 miles, a starting cabin temperature of 46 degrees, and you'll see the snowflake on the app there and that means our battery is cold for this test. I let that test run for 15 minutes and after that we had a range of 164 miles. Our cabin was all warmed up to 70 degrees and our snowflake is now gone which means our battery is all warmed up. And we've got a total range loss of 6 miles. For test three, we've got a low state of charge, so we're sitting at 85 miles of range. Our cabin is at 50 degrees, and we've also got a cold battery for this test. 15 minutes later, with max heat on, our range has dropped to 82 miles, and our cabin is now all the way up to 82 degrees. Our battery is also warmed up all the way, and that gives us a range loss of three miles. Our last test in the snow here, we've got a starting range of 61 miles, and we've got a starting interior cabin temp of 36 degrees. So we let this run for 15 minutes, full blast heat, all heated seats on, and right as I hit the 15 minute mark, I actually got an alert on my phone saying that sentry mode and climate control has been turned off because my battery reached 21%. And at the end, we only dropped to 60 miles of range, and our ending cabin temperature was 82 degrees. That gives us a range loss of just one mile. And Mr. Smiley has melted away. So as you can see from test four, if you're worried about your car completely running out of battery by preconditioning it, that is not gonna happen. Once it hits 21%, it is gonna shut that off. It's gonna turn off sentry mode. It's basically gonna go into a battery saving type mode, similar to what you might see on your smartphone. So looking at these results, it was actually the opposite of what I expected. I was expecting the last test to use the most energy. It actually used the least. And our most energy intensive test with the most range loss was actually test two, which was kind of our middle of the road test with the battery uh, in the middle. So that's really interesting. I'm not sure why exactly that happens. Like I mentioned earlier, I would have liked to do multiple trials for this, but I didn't quite have time to do all that. So a couple interesting things I noticed here on those last two tests where I put on maximum heat, it topped out at 82 degrees. So that is reassuring that your car isn't just gonna continue to blast heat into the car, possibly damage the interior if it gets too hot. It's gonna shut that off and kind of float the temperature at 82 degrees. Again, this was only a 15 minute test, so I'm not sure if that would have gotten any warmer if I let it run for 30 minutes or an hour or something like that, but it seemed like it leveled out pretty well at 82 degrees and didn't go above that. Another interesting thing I noticed is once the snowflake went away on the app, it actually could gain range a little bit. So while I was watching the app as the test went on, Sometimes after that snowflake went away, the range would actually get a bump of a couple miles. And I believe that's because when the battery is cold, it actually kind of locks that range in place. It's not usable, but it's still available in the battery pack. So some of that energy isn't available right away, but once it gets warmed up a little bit, you're able to use that energy again. But overall, if we take a step back and just look at all the tests, uh, we saw the maximum was only six miles of range lost, which I think is not bad at all, especially given how big the battery is in the Model 3 and how much range you have to start with. And honestly, if you're doing a similar precondition or preheat of your car for 15 minutes, I really don't foresee that going above 10 miles of range lost. Maybe if you let it run for 30 minutes or 40 five minutes which would be unnecessary quite honestly you might lose a lot more range but i don't really think that's necessary i mean looking at our test it easily hit that preferred temperature within those 15 minutes so I don't think there's any advantage to preheating longer than that. And we also saw the snowflake disappear for every single test, meaning that the battery was completely warm in under 15 minutes. I covered a lot of this in my winter Tesla tips video, but preconditioning the battery and preconditioning the car has a lot of advantages. So if you wanna see a little bit more about those in depth, I will have that video linked down below. But the verdict here, I think it is definitely worth it to precondition your car, even if it's just for 10 or 15 minutes, it makes the driving experience much better better, makes the car much more comfortable when you actually hop in and are ready to drive, and most of the snow and ice can melt off of your car before you drive to make it safer for other people around you. I would like to repeat this test in the summer when it's a lot warmer out and I'm actually cooling my car down instead of heating it up to see what kind of energy loss I see from that. 
But for now, we're gonna have to wait on that because it's still very cold out. But if you're in a warmer area or you've done a similar test to this in the winter, I wanna hear from you what kind of energy loss you see from preheating your car or preconditioning your battery. Let me know down in the comments. That is all for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.